how to read a volume profile chart. What's going on? Welcome on into the video. Let's get right on into it. So I got the S&P 500 pulled up on my screen and I want this to be a fairly straightforward way or a video on using and reading the volume profile. So what you'll notice is that on, I have two things on the screen, really two indicators. So on the bottom, you'll see that we've got the volume, the traditional volume that we're a lot of, a lot of us are used to seeing all that stuff. On the right hand side, we've got the volume profile and I am using trading view. So first things first, if you want to get access to a volume profile on your charts and you don't have access for free at your broker, which some brokers do have it for free, I believe Webull does, you can utilize trading view, which I will leave a link to trading view below. If you are going to use them, you cannot get it on the free plan. I know it sucks. I agree. I wish they had it on the free plan, but they don't. You have to have a paid version. You can go with the cheapest option and get it. The link saves you fifteen dollars. So if you're if you're looking at if you you're ha if you have to do it, save save some money. I'd recommend it. And also, if you want to upgrade, wait till Black Friday because they have a massive sale for their their plans. So wait till Black Friday to upgrade. It's actually coming up kind of soon from when I'm making this video. So. Uh, if I go to my volume profile indicator, it's, if you can go to indicators, uh, what I'm going to be using is the visible range. So it's the VRVP, the visible range volume profile. There are other types of the volume profile. This is the simplest form in my opinion, and it will be the most beneficial to you to use if you use the visible range. Now, when I pull up the visible range and I edit the indicator, if I go inside of it and I go to the settings, there'll be a bunch of things, inputs, style, visibility. You can copy exactly what I have. If you like what I have, by no means I, do I recommend you do that, but you could. I don't want to get too, too deep into all this stuff, but just so you see, so you see, I have it set to number of rows, row size of 60. If I went to row size of 30, you'll see what happens here. Watch when I click on 30. Boom, the volume uh, bars become much larger. There's less of them. It's not as granular, which you might like, you might not. I like 60, it's a good number for me. Personally, my, my thoughts. Uh, then I have volume up down. I have it set to total. You can have it set to total. Actually, it's probably easier to just do total. Uh, I have it. I had them set to the same color, but that's that. The value area of I have a hundred. Okay. Style. A couple things. Width percentage of the box. Twenty percent. If I were to change it to ten percent, watch what happens. It makes it smaller, so you have more room on your chart. So it's it's pretty straightforward. Nothing crazy here. Twenty percent seems to work for me. Uh, I'm eh, I can probably drop to like eighteen to be honest with you. Uh, and that's that gets the job done. Right hand side for me. Uh, you can have values, you can have value area high, low, point of control, developing POC, point of control, all this stuff. I get at all that out of there. I keep the value area up and down set to the same color, and I keep it all as simple as possible. Visibility, I have it on all time frames. But you can have it only visible on certain time frames if you want to use it only on certain time frames. It's an option. This is not a tutorial video necessarily for that, but it's just so you see where I'm coming from when it comes to the volume profile. Now let's get into the actual applications. So you have it on the right-hand side. You're like, okay, cool. Well, how do I use it? What do I do? I'm going to jump to a daily time frame chart and uh, we have the S&P pulled up right here. So what we have is essentially we're looking at volume at a specific price. Okay. So because the volume profile is on the right-hand side, it's on the y-axis here, this is showing high volume but then you bring this across to the price of that high volume. So the higher or the larger the bar, the more volume was exchanged at that price. Okay. So we call these areas or these zones, high volume nodes. And then these zones where there's not as much volume, low volume nodes. That's what it's called. Okay. Does it really matter if you call it that? No, but that's what it's called. And what we find is that a lot of orders, to keep it as simple as possible, a lot of orders are clearly going through at these high volume nodes, which means it's an area of interest. And an area of interest or a key level, as some would like to say, tends to stay a key level. Does it always? No. Market can just do whatever it wants to do. If there's news, it doesn't matter. But we talk about the whole picture. We're talking probabilities and what tends to happen. And what tends to happen is that price tends to respect prior key levels to some degree. And there's tends to be more reactions there. And what we tend to see is that an, at an area of a volume node, price tends to stay in that area or at that level more. And price tends to move more aggressively through lower volume nodes. Okay. That's what we look at. And that's what we're talking about. So as we speak right now, we had a period of time 
where price was kind of consolidating in here, which built this volume node. Then price came down and then bounced around for about a week in that same level. Pushed up, pushed below. Now it's pushing back above, but we could have used that this area of consolidation would have built a volume node to some degree, not, not to the same size, but to some degree, which that we could have used to our advantage in here to say, hmm, let's be a little cautious. I don't know if we're going to see price just plummet right through immediately. There might be a consolidation. This could work on any time frame as well. So I'm going to jump over to like a different stock so you can kind of get a better view of it. Tesla is an example. So here's Tesla's chart. And I actually had some trades on Tesla today. But as you let the volume profile load up on the right-hand side, you got the chart, you got the volume on the bottom. You say, okay, we got high volume here. You know, we had high volume here, but what about the volume profile? What does it tell us? Right here, massive volume node, little one right in here, and then a big one up in here. You can even kind of separate into two specific spots, but you can, you know, it depends on how granular you want to get. Well, what I see is Tesla kind of bouncing around between this area and then this area down here, which are the two volume nodes. And in between, we have more, more aggressive, more trending price action. Prior, it was downside. Now it's trending to the upside. So price tends to move faster through lower volume nodes, okay, as there were not a lot of orders there, et cetera. And there's, it's more of a magnet. There's more of a magnet to these higher volume nodes because it was a prior area of a lot of orders. That's what we are taking away from the volume profile. It's kind of like a way to see behind the scenes a little bit deeper into what's going on under the surface of a given stock, a given asset, whatever, the S&P, and we can utilize it in that manner. Is it a perfect indicator? I'm not here to tell you it's a perfect indicator. I don't know. Is it an indicator that I like to use? Yes, because I like to use volume and price, and then I'm, I draw my own lines. That's what I like to do. Is it what you like to do? I don't know. Could it be helpful to you? Try it out. If you like to trade momentum, for me, what I like to do is pair up my momentum strategy with what I see on the chart based off the candlesticks with the volume profile. If I see my setup, but we're right in the middle of a high volume node, I'm going to go, mm, I'm not too sure. If I see my setup and it's a long setup and I see that we're now above the recent high volume node and we're, we're, we're price action now above this level, I say, okay, I like what I see because we're breaking above the volume node, breaking above a key level of orders. Now that we're above that, we might have a magnet higher for continuation and vice versa on the downside. That's how I personally like to use it. Maybe it's not how you want to use it. However you want to use it, use it. That's the volume profile, the visible range of volume profile, total volume. Keep it simple. That's how it's done. Peace.